Hi there, and welcome to the Empowered Advocacy course. We are so excited to deliver this lesson plan that has been inspired by and built for you. This course will take you through our Arthritis Foundation Action Center and provide you with tools and resources that you can use to really inform your advocacy throughout the year and prepare to apply for a travel award for this year's 2019 Live Yes Advocacy Summit. Now, before we get started, I want to encourage you to print the guiding worksheet to accompany this course. Through this worksheet, you will be able to read, respond, uh, and have some additional guidance to identifying the answers that you need to really master this course and become that empowered advocate. So print out your worksheet and we'll get started. To kick us off, I want to first introduce you to our team. The Advocacy and Access team is led by Anna Hyde, who's based here in Washington, DC, along with the entire row of people in the color purple. Our DC team helps to make sure that the voice of arthritis is heard on Capitol Hill and beyond. Vincent, our Director of Federal Affairs, helps to make sure that legislation and regulation that is considered in Washington, DC has the voice of arthritis in mind. Ben leads our state team as the Senior Director of State Legislative Affairs. He leads our state directors who are in the turquoise blue color and forming their policy work and informing how they interact with the grassroots networks in each of their states. Michelle directs Advocacy Alliance Development and helps to make sure that advocacy is a central part to all that we do. And my name is Julie. I manage our grassroots advocacy programs, and I'm so excited to share this lesson with you today and help you raise your voices in the fight to break down barriers to care for people with arthritis. Let me introduce you to our state team with our state map. This map indicates where each of our state directors works. The regions are large and they all cover many states and different territories. Um, our state team will focus on the state legislatures in each of these states and holds key relationships with our grassroots networks, including our advocacy committees, our local leadership boards, making sure that our voices are heard at every level of the Arthritis Foundation. So Stephen Schultz is our direct or state director out in the West. He covers all of those dark blue states from California to Washington and Montana, all the way to Alaska and Hawaii. Kristen Crawford covers the Southeast. She's the pink re region, covering everything from New Mexico all the way to Florida and up to North Carolina. Pam Fields covers our turquoise states from the Dakotas all the way to Ohio, where she's based. Michelle Guadalupe covers the green states in the center of the country um, and helps to make sure that the voices of people from Kansas to Illinois are heard by their state legislatures. In orange, Mary Bartlett covers much of the Northeast and she is a key voice in making sure that we are heard from Virginia all the way up to Vermont and beyond. Finally, Ben, he covers the north, north, north part of the country uh, from Maine down to his home state of Massachusetts. And that makes up our advocacy team. Our advocacy team is here to be by your side throughout your arthritis journey. We are here to listen when you are experiencing a barrier to care and help connect you with opportunities to address the heart of that matter. We wanna strategize with you if we have a, a piece of legislation that we can promote. If it doesn't pass in the state legislature or in Congress in Capitol Hill, we're here to strategize with you for what we do next. And we're here to celebrate with you when a bill becomes a law. One of the really exciting projects that we work on is our state implementation program. You may know that we've had over 100 legislative victories since 2014 across the country in our state legislatures. And what do we do next? Well, we wanna make sure that those state pieces of legislation that are now fully law that we've worked to promote, we wanna make sure that they're implemented in full and that all patients and caregivers who are living in that state who could be benefited by that law are enjoying those benefits to the fullest extent. So we are here from the beginning when you're having the problem through the legislative process and of course, after the legislative process is done in implementation as well. 
And we're all super excited to welcome you to this course, to welcome you to the advocacy program, and to make sure that your voices are heard by decision makers, from your local decision makers to your national level ones. Because your story matters. Your story as an arthritis patient, as a caregiver, someone living with arthritis, you are the expert in your experience. And through our program, through this Empowered Advocacy course, we're gonna give you the tools that you can use to make sure that your voice is heard. We wanna make sure that everyone understands the impact of arthritis and especially that our decision makers understand the impact of arthritis. Because if we can impact them, then as they make decisions on particular pieces of legislation, they can be informed by our need, by our voice, by our story. Together, we really can make that difference. So let's move into some of our training. We've done our introductions and now we wanna dig into our tools. With your guiding worksheet in mind, please take notes and think about where some of the resources live on our website so that you can do your background research quickly and easily. So first, we wanna welcome you to our website. All of the resources we're going to be showing you today live in our Action Center. These are the tools that are really going to help you connect with Congress, connect with your state legislatures, and understand this process of what it means to be an Arthritis Foundation empowered advocate. So you can make your voice heard by coming to the Arthritis Foundation webpage. You're gonna click into our Action Center, either through our homepage or by going to this Fighting For You section and then clicking advocate. When you get to our landing page, you'll simply go to the left hand navigation and click Action Center. When you come to the Action Center, you're going to see a number of really cool resources. First, you'll see that we have a list of action alerts that allow you to send a pre-formatted letter to Congress in about five minutes or less. You'll also see that we have a track legislation tool and a look up legislators tool in the left hand navigation that allows you to share your story and do your background research all through our website, a place that's accessible to you at any time. So in the left hand navigation, we're gonna look at two tools in particular that you can use to really elevate your advocacy efforts. The first is our find elected officials tool. With this tool, all you need to do is input your zip code and you'll be able to identify every elected official that you have from the president of the United States to your local elected officials. Through the Find Legislation tool, we'll be able to track legislation and understand how federal bills are doing compared to uh, what we want them to do. So we can leverage our ask based on our research and we can understand a little bit more about how we need to communicate with Congress. So first, let's look at Find Your Legislator. Again, you'll select the Look Up Legislator tool or Find Legislators in the left-hand sidebar of your navigation. And when you're looking here, you'll be able to simply type in your zip code and then type in your home address line. Then, clicking Next, you'll get a list of all of your federal and local officials. You can see that these are divided by your federal elected officials and your state elected officials. For the purpose of our course, we're going to be focusing on our federal elected officials, but the skills that you'll learn during this course can be applied to your state elected officials very easily. When you're looking at your federal elected officials, you can see that each of these is a hyperlinked profile to one of these elected officials. When you click one of them, for instance, I've selected Senator Cory Booker in this example, you'll get a full profile of all of their information. You'll be able to see their capital address, their capital phone number, their fax number if you'd like to send them a fax. You can see their social media information. You can learn about their birth date, their home, uh, their 
hometown, their birthplace. You can learn all about their education, their occupations before they were in Congress and beyond. You can learn about the committees that they sit on and all of these different key pieces of information for our elected officials. That's pretty cool. This is really good information to have when we're trying to understand more about our elected officials. Let's say, for example, that you want to make a connection with Senator Cory Booker. One of the things that you can do is understand perhaps where he went to school. Now, Senator Booker went to school at Stanford University for his undergrad. I don't know about you, but if you also went to Stanford University or maybe you have a family member who did, you can connect with Senator Booker a little bit more personally by making reference to that alumni connection that you might have. Or perhaps you know that Senator Booker has, their, has his home in, in Newark, New Jersey, and maybe you have uh, a connection to that place. You can very easily help to foster that relationship with this member of Congress through those key details that you've done some research on ahead of time. In your guiding worksheet, you'll ask, you'll have a question about your federal legislative district. And I wanna show you for a second where you would go to find that information. So you'll come back to your directory here and you'll see that we have our full list all over again of all of our elected officials. When you see your representative, you'll wanna click into their profile. There, next to their name, you'll see their party affiliation and the federal legislative district that they represent. So the country is divided into many, many, many federal legislative districts. And when you have a, a representative in Congress, they're the representative of one of those districts. Constituents, or the people who live in those districts, then have those representatives to have that relationship with, to share their stories with, so that they can be represented in Congress. So if you click into Representative Freelinghausen's profile here, it'll say Representative Rodney Freelinghausen, Republican, New Jersey 11. And you'll know that he represents the 11th district in New Jersey. One other really great thing that you can do through this Look Up Legislators tool is to check off the boxes next to the names for each of these elected officials. When you do so, you'll be populated with a web page that allows you to send a message to your elected officials and introduce yourself. Through the guiding worksheet, you'll get to send a letter to Congress through our Action Center, but you might like to consider sending an introduction message, message as well. So the message that you'll send through the Action Center later on will be about a particular issue, but I encourage you to use this form to share your one sentence story that we'll discuss a little bit later. So next, let's talk about the track legislation tool or the find legislation tool. This tool is simple and easy. And the example that we're going to talk about today has to do with a policy pr priority that we have called step therapy. Now, step therapy is a practice used by insurers that delays access to care for patients when it's used inappropriately. So step therapy is when you and your doctor decide the right medication for you might be a more expensive biologic because of whatever the drug is going to do for your symptoms. But your insurer might come in and say, hey, 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 before we authorize payment for this more expensive medication, we ask that you first try and fail this less expensive medication before moving to that higher priced medication. So this process can be a, a major delay for people with arthritis because if you're taking a biologic, you really won't know what the efficacy is until you've been on the drug for about 90 days. 
And we know that for people with arthritis, onset of symptoms, between onset of symptoms and your first two years uh, of diagnosis, that's when you'll be having the most joint symptoms, the most joint damage and beyond. So if during your diagnostic process, you're going through some of these burdensome step therapy processes, you might not have access to the drug that you really need until you've already experienced permanent joint damage because of that delay. So we're trying to address that delay and step therapy, the burdensome use, through the Restoring the Patient's Voice Act. This bill is a bill seen by the House of Representatives. So your representative that you've just looked up could or could not be a sponsor of this piece of legislation. So this piece of legislation the Restoring the Patient's Voice Act, is called in shorthand H.R. 2077. And that means House of Representatives Bill Number 2077. In order to search for this bill, you can either type in step therapy into your search feature and you'll get this full list. Or if you search H.R. 2077, you'll be prompted with just one result and that's the Restoring the Patient's Voice Act. Once you get it, click in and you'll be able to learn more about this bill. For example, you'll be able to read the bill description about how this will curb step therapy protocols for special cases. You'll also be able to see that the sponsor, the introducing sponsor of the bill is Representative Brad Wenstrup from Ohio. If you want to see if your member of Congress, your representative in the House, is sponsoring this legislation, it's quite simple. All you have to do is click this drop down bar and you'll be prompted with a full list of all of the co-sponsors who are a part of this legislation. You can search by last name and you can find your member of Congress if they're on the list. And if they're not, you'll know that we have an ask to make. So based on your representative's kind of sponsorship status for this bill, that will help us determine if we ask them to help to sponsor the bill and ask them to help promote it, or if we thank them for already having sponsored the legislation. It's really important that we do this background research before we go into a Hill meeting or into a call with your legislator or even into an email situation. Because let's say for whatever reason that your representative is sponsoring a piece of legislation like this one, and we think that they aren't, so we go to them and we ask them to sponsor the legislation that they're already sponsoring. Well, that reflects poorly on us and our ask because we didn't do our research in the first place. And it makes us seem ungrateful that they are already re sponsoring this bill um, and we haven't noticed it yet. So we want to do our background research. This is one of our first steps. So come here and you can evaluate whether your member of Congress is sponsoring the bill or not. And from here, just like before, we can click into these profiles and learn more about these members of Congress. So let's say we wanted to learn more about Brad Wenstrup, we could click in and see this profile all over again. Now, before we leave this site, we would exit out of each of these profiles and come back just to the bill landing page and what we would be able to see through the actions section of this landing page we would be able to see where this bill is in congress right now so when a bill is introduced it's put into a specific committee of people who are specialized in that topic area who can evaluate the merit of the legislation right now this bill is in a committee that you can see through your actions. Um, so please do go follow the process, go through the track legislation tool and on your guiding worksheet, in indicate which committee that is. Okay, so we've looked at our two basic background research tools. Now let's look at what it make, takes to make Congress listen. How can we maximize our impact using this research that we've done and thinking about these tools that we have? We have our valuable 
but they're only as valuable as we make them. And we make them more valuable and more impactful by sharing our one sentence stories. So our one sentence stories are essential. And they're essential because they help to paint the picture of what arthritis really means in our daily lives. And I wanna say, the most important thing to remember is that you are the expert when it comes to your arthritis story. You are the expert. And we wanna make sure that your expertise is featured in any of our action alerts, in any of our tools, in any of our research resources. So remember, to be honest, to be concise, short and sweet, and to be you. Here's my one sentence story. I have had arthritis since I was seven years old, and when I was first diagnosed, I needed to use a wheelchair to get around. But because of access to my medications, I was able to overcome that, and I was able to tap dance across stage when I was in high school. And that's not the story for everyone, but it can be if we increase our access to care and break down some of these barriers to care for people with arthritis. I share that story to help people understand one of the many faces of arthritis. And I share that story early and often because I know that polite persistence, excuse me, persuades people. So the more often we share our one sentence stories, the less surprising they might become and the more understanding people can become of what arthritis might really look like for you. So here are some additional examples of one sentence stories. And I want you to think about these as we go through the rest of the course so that you can write your own one sentence story as we go through this process and as we become empowered advocates. Uh, so the first is, each month my medications cost $1,200 out of pocket. Sometimes that means that I can't afford to pay my rent. This story really helps to highlight that barrier of cost as it comes to access. This one is shorter and sweeter than mine, but without access to my medications, I wouldn't be able to work, let alone walk. This one paints that picture of access to medications being essential for uh, mobility and, and productivity and being able to uh, be a part of so much of, uh, of the day-to-day -day life, right? Uh, and the last one is, just to manage my care, sometimes I have to take a full day off. Managing my care shouldn't feel like a full-time job. These one sentences, well, these one sentence stories are emblematic of many of the arthritis stories that we hear at the Arthritis Foundation, but they are not unique and they can be yours. And we want to hear your one sentence story as well. We want it to be uh, symbolic of what you've experienced and it might be hard to do so in one sentence. So your one sentence story for our travel award purposes will just be a few sentences and then you'll have a 300 word essay space where you can populate more of your story and more of the reason why we might uh, want to empower you to come to the Advocacy Summit. Okay, so now let's talk about action alerts and what we do with those one sentence stories as they apply to the Action Center. Well, when you come to the Action Center, we mentioned before that we have some pre-formatted messages that you can send quickly and easily. You can make your voice heard by modifying the messages that we add. So something that I'll share with you is that pre-formatted messages are only as impactful as the sender might make them. It is essential that you take some time to look at the message itself and make it personal to you. Sometimes if a pre-formatted message is sent to Capitol Hill, it'll get stuck in, in a spam filter unless it is uniquely different from some of the other pre-formatted messages sent. And we wanna make sure that your message beats that filter and gets into the hands of a staffer on Capitol Hill. The only way that we can do that is by making sure your voice is uniquely a part of the letter. So we wanna encourage you to modify those messages. I'll show you how. To beat the filter, modify the message. Our role when it comes to an action alert is to put the person behind the policy. So when we're sending a letter to Congress, we're asking them to support particular pieces of policy or not support them. And what we wanna do is show them why. 
why is a policy going to impact you? Or why, why does it matter if it's going to impact people with arthritis? We'll share our stories, our one sentence stories, to make sure that those messages come through loud and clear so that we can be the best empowered advocates we can be. So we're going to break down how you can modify your message and put the person behind the policy based on the amount of time you have. So if you are only having five minutes and you want to make sure that you're sending this message, but you also want to beat the filter, the top thing that you can do is just to change the subject line. Maybe this one that says ensure patient access, cap the copay on specialty drugs, should say something more personal than that. Maybe you want to say help people from Nevada afford their medications, or I'm from Nevada and I need your help. Please help us cap the copay. Um, maybe you can make it more personal just for your life or your relationship that you have with your member of Congress. If you have just a few more minutes than those five minutes, we want to make sure that you also provide opening comments that introduce your patient experience. We want to make sure that you add your one sentence story to this section of our action alert. We want the first thing that this person reads to be the person behind this policy. So you can input your one sentence story here. Okay. If you have two more minutes from that, you have 10 minutes total, we want you to change the subject line. We want you to add in your one sentence story, but we also want you to add in a personal thank you note and a closing to help people really feel your sense of connection to this issue. And if you have just a few more minutes than that, we ask that you do all of the following, change the subject line, provide your one sentence story, add that thank you, and look at the message body as well. Because if you can add in details from your personal story here as well, we can be sure that your message will truly put the person behind the policy and will reach those members of Congress in the impactful way that you really want them to. These things can be done in 15 minutes time. And I want you to think about the other things that you might do each day that would take 15 minutes. Are you spending 15 minutes scrolling through Facebook or Instagram or Twitter? If you are, maybe you could spend 15 minutes coming to the Action Center and sending an action alert in a really impactful way. And you can help in those 15 minutes break down these barriers to care. Legislative victories are completely possible as long as we're working together to make them happen as long as we're working together to put the person behind the policy. So if you are all in, this is what we ask of you. Please complete your guided worksheet. We want you to take a look at these tools and now put them into practice. Go on to our Action Center, look up your members of Congress, understand their co-sponsorship status on HR 2077, our step therapy piece of legislation. We want to understand and hear your one sentence story. And importantly, we don't want this to be the end of your story sharing experience with us. We want this to be something that can jumpstart you into a future as an advocacy leader. So after you've completed this course, you will be eligible to apply for a travel award to attend the Advocacy Summit in 2019 on March 11th and 12th. And we encourage you to, as you approach the application, write out your story and your one sentence story in a Word document before you apply so that we can make sure that you are capturing it to the best of your ability and that you have it for posterity's sake because someday you might want to use it again in a letter to Congress or even uh, in a speech on Capitol Hill when you're meeting with your member of Congress in person at the summit. So thank you so much for taking the time to come through this course with us. If you have any questions at all, please reach out to me at jeller, J-E-L-L-E-R, at arthritis.org, and I'll be happy to connect you with some new resources. Thank you for completing the course and welcome as an empowered advocate to the next chapter where you're sharing your story impactfully with Capitol Hill and beyond. Thank you so much and have a great day.